and we'll talk to you more about upcoming programs at the break, but welcome to a wonderful night of music. Uh, take a poet and a songwriter, and you know, poets are poets and songwriters are songwriters, and sometimes they mesh together into one human being. And that is what we have here tonight with some wonderful songs. And you add a bass player, and what more could you ask for? So that's all I'm going to say now, because you're here to hear them. So here's James Keelahan and David White. We, uh, we drove down from just outside Ottawa. So David is downstairs refreshing himself. No, no, he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's refreshed enough. I'm now refreshed. He is now refreshed. You're all looking good. <laughs> refreshed. down here in the uh, United States for our last three shows of the year. <laughs> We're playing here, playing Brunswick, Maine tomorrow, and Cumberland, Rhode Island on Sunday afternoon. And then we're shutting her down. Yep. We have more than enough time to uh, sing several songs of disaster. <laughs>
you. This is a song that's the, the title track off the new album. Wrote it with my good friends, uh, uh, J.D. Edwards and Kara Luft, The Small Glories. <clears throat> we wrote this about, uh, we wrote this sort of pre-pandemic, we wrote it about uh, the, uh, uh, one of the torturous things about traveling, because the great, one of the great things about this job is the traveling, which we did, then didn't get to do for like two or three years, but one of, the, one of the torturous things about the traveling is all this amazing stuff that you see when you're on the road. And you try and explain that to people back home and they just don't get it. Like one of the last uh, big tours that I did before the, the, the pandemic came down, I was over in Europe uh, playing one of my favorite festivals in a little town called Tuna in Denmark. Had a half day off at the end of the festival before we had it, had it off. And I uh, spent uh, that half day in this amazing museum of Danish furniture. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so like the next day we go down to play a gig just outside Hamburg in this lovely little town called Kadenburg, which is not only a lovely little town, but it is also the home of the German Museum of Concrete. <laughs> which was fascinating, but try that, try to tell that to people at home. <laughs> about how fascinating rebar can be. <laughs> anyway, that's why the chorus to this tune is, uh, the picture don't do it justice. If you could see the things I see, don't need to hear about it second hand. Be there if you care to come along with me. I drove down a road this morning, the sun was at my back. Down to the cold, clear water, past a rundown fishing shack. Across the bay, the autumn leaves I turned the hills to flame, and a small bird fluttered by. And as it did, I called your name. And maybe we could rent a boat, we drift across the sunlit bay. You wrapped up in your winter coat Just to keep the wind away Spend the afternoon doing nothing When the sun goes down Light a fire and drink some wine Slowly drive back into town The picture don't do it justice If you can see the things I see Need to hear about it second hand There if you care to come along with me They're Driving into a city at night Every street has got a name Reminds me of a place I've been it all begins to look the same And underneath the banners and the lights My mind begins to change Now how I feel in the center of town Is calling out your name And I wish that you could tag along I sit beside me at a restaurant I'm Drinking whiskey till four in the morning Singing harmony To build a faulty, getting the words all wrong, but building it out without a care, going on and on and on. The picture don't do it justice. If you can see the things I see, no need to hear about a second hand. There, if you care to come along with me. The picture don't do it justice If you can see the things I see Don't need 
to hear about it second hand There if you care to come along with me That's second hand I that's like to say. Yeah. Thank you. I've uh, been spending some time over in Italy the past few years in, in Genoa, thanks to my... Uh, do, you, do you guys know a fellow by the name of Beppe Gambetta? Yeah. Actually, his picture is so, right over there on the wall. Well, if you, yeah. if, you don't, if you haven't heard of Beppe, apparently his picture is right over there on the wall. You can see him, so we'll have maybe a, can't have hear him, him. though. He's, he's, an, he's an amazing uh, uh, Italian uh, bluegrass flat picker. And, uh, and uh, uh, I get to, uh, Beppe and I have become uh, good friends over the years, and, and we play as many gigs together over the course of the year as we can, but he keeps inviting me over to Genoa to do these uh, gigs, because Genoa is his hometown, and he does this uh, yearly thing called Acoustic Night, uh, where he brings friends of his from all over the world to come and play concerts. And it started out as him just doing like one night in a theater for 500 people, and now it sort of stretches into the, like, three nights in a 1700 seat theater. But, uh, but the last one I went over to do, uh, Acoustic Night 18, was an extra special thing because he, he uh, brought a group of us together, myself, uh, Felix Meyer from France, and Eric Menuz from, from France, uh, to translate the works of this guy by the name of uh, uh, Fabrizio de Andre. And I am guessing that nobody here knows who Fabrizio de Andre is, yes. which, is which is a real shame. <laughs> Is Fabrizio, uh, oh, was that a yes? No. Yes. Oh, good man. Um, Fabrizio uh, was basically Italy's Bob Dylan. <clears throat> in, the, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, he recorded a series of albums that sold millions, packed out concert halls, not only in, the, in Italy, but other, other parts of Europe. But since Fabrizio died, it seems like, you know, like as often happens, you know, the, the reputation sort of retreats into the local area, and, and uh, um, Beppe wanted to, to breathe life into the hometown hero and have us translate some of his work into uh, our languages. And um, translating the, a song by another songwriter is a little bit like writing with somebody else's brain, because it's like, it's all there. You know, like the, the rhyme structure, the melody, the rhythm, it's all there, but if you try and translate it straight across, word for word, from Italian to English, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work because uh, it, it, nothing lines up uh, rhythmically. Hardly anything lines up in terms of how it's going to fit in the melody, and the rhyming certainly doesn't line up. And, and uh, but let me say, the easiest job in the world, I think, is Italian songwriter because every freaking thing rhymes. <laughs> you know, it either it either ends in O or A. <laughs> so you know, it's not like. It doesn't matter, but um, it's, a, it's a fascinating process, but, but what you have to do, and, and Fabrizio knew this, because Fabrizio translated a bunch of Leonard Cohen songs and Dylan songs into Italian, and Fabrizio had said in his writing that, that the closest you can come as a translator is to, is to try and stay true to the metaphor of what the other writer uh, was doing, and so, uh, and, and you have to watch out for things like little, little idiomatic things, and especially with, with uh, Genovese, because uh, the, the dialect in Genoa is completely different than anywhere else in Italy, and it's got, it's, all, it's got all its own various little things. And there was one of the songs I was translating <clears throat> where the first line, when I translated it uh, straight across, it, it came out as, I will start with the moon in the sky, and I went like, that is like way too perfect. Like this has to be something idiomatic that I'm missing, right? So I went to Beppe, I said, is this like, is this I will start with the moon in the sky? Is that like a Genovese uh, idiom? And he goes, yes, yes. I said, well, what's the closest idiom in, in English? And he goes, oh, in English? He says, uh, it would be once upon a time. <laughs> because in, in Genoa, the way that parents start their stories to their children is they say, I will start with the moon in the sky, uh, not once upon a time. So you, you see these, uh, anyway, it's not in this song, but the, the name of this song is, uh, Cativa Strata, which when you translate it straight, straight across, uh, translates as the bad road. And I thought that that was a little bit clumsy, and I thought that the closest uh, um, English idiom to that would be the road to ruin. 
And uh, this song is uh, about a trickster character who drops into people's lives and uh, totally blows up their lives, and then they follow him off down the road to ruin, as it were. So this is La Cativa Strada, Road to Ruin. At a military parade He spat in the face of a young recruit The soldier told him that's disgusting He said not compared to what you'll do But anyway I should be going And the young recruit he followed Laid his weapons down and followed Along that crooked road to ruin Down behind the railway station In the darkness and the rain He stole some woman's money He said you've done that on the game But anyway I should be going And the working girl she followed Wrapped in her sorrow she followed Along that crooked road to ruin On a night without a moon He moved the stars to different places and When the pilot crashed the plane he said you died by your own mistake And anyway I should be going And the pilot understood He left the stars behind to follow Sula Sua Katiba Strava a young man on the bottle he poured another drink and as he watched him down it he said I know just what you're thinking that it's time that I should go and the drunkard understood he said nothing but he followed Along that crooked road to ruin And at a trial of star-crossed lovers He kissed each juror then and there And to their blushing faces He said, now it's just it's more natural, it's just, and it's so clear that I should go. And the jurors, oh, they followed, open mouth, they rose and followed. Sua, sua, cativa strada. he faded to those that called him good and to those that called him evil he said it should be understood don't follow where I go but each will get a little love and each will have love of their own Sua Sula Cativa Strata Get a little love, and each will have love of their own. Along that crooked road to ruin.
just a letter Sometimes I leave it there In the November air For a day or two Don't want to let it come in It's when I do that's when the heartache Why am I still paying for his sins? What's he paid lately? And it's just a letter But as I unfold it My hands shake as I hold it The grief washes over me Try to hold back the time Of all the feelings I've jammed up inside All the parts of me that have died When will I get free? Because it's always the same a request for parole That bastard's name It shatters my soul Would I like to submit A victim's account Three decades of pain Could I put it all down But it's just a letter Every year I write the board back And relive the attack Like it's yesterday And I let them know Of the wreckage that won't let me go Of the wish that I'll never outgrow that I hope he dies in there Then I walk to the corner And I send it away It'll land on some desk In a couple of days What happens then Is anyone's guess In the scales of justice Is it more It's just a letter Thank you. 
I've been thinking about the ones who can't be here. Every drop I'm drinking seems to draw them near. One shot for my father, another for my son. One to keep the ghosts at bay until the midday comes. What's for you won't go by you if you just take it slow. One eye on the sky and keep one on the I'll find something everywhere I go. One's a hand of friendship, one's the open door. One's the joy of never knowing what I've had before. What's for you won't go by you if you just take it slow. One eye on the sky and keep one on the road. What's for you? This is David Woodhead on the bass there. We have a set list, and then we have our brains. <laughs> We'll do uh, that one, and uh, mm -hmm. that one. benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, po like point again thing? with that one. That one there. <laughs> uh, number two from the bottom. Number, number three, three from, from the bottom. bottom. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> but wait a minute, so what if we did <laughs> this one here? <laughs> and then this one over here. <laughs> You've got enough off light it's Keel Hand concert and you haven't had to sing yet. So, so here's a But I've been throwing all, all sorts of new stuff at you, so uh, so here's an older one. Which you can sing. I hope. Yeah. One. I'm sorry, I've not been distracted by chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so easily done. But that would make the second piece of chocolate cake this week, and that would be a problem. Oh, it's a slippery slope. So it is a slippery slope. Mate, 
riders on our tail and soon they rode us down for he's on the other side Red River's rising Red River's rising for he's on the other side Red River's rising Red River's rising for he's on the other side Stockade wall, we're heavy with the snow. Corey's on the other side. The muffled drums beat out the time, and Thomas was laid low. Corey's on the other side. Red rivers rising, red rivers rising. Corey's on the other side. songs uh, this set and then we'll take a bit of a break. You can all please buy all the chocolate cake <laughs> and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, there's CDs for sale over here, um, uh, both David's and mine. And there's actually, there's a, a thing I call Beautiful, which is a tribute to Gordon Lightfoot and we're, we're actually gonna play the song that I played on that album. We'll play that in the next set. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. we will. Sure. Because we have to go remember it. So when I was, no, no, it's okay. I, I remember it. I don't remember what key we do it in, but I remember. E. 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 play this set, but then we'd have to play three songs. Let's just play, let's just play two. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll, we'll dig in a little bit deeper next set. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, Genoa, um, a lot of you know that I, I write uh, a lot of story songs and there'll be more of those coming up in the, the next uh, set. Um, <clears throat> but the way that I sort of work out the story songs is when I find a good story, um, I then tell it to people over and over and over again. Uh, I will, like, I probably told the story of cold Missouri waters to 50, 60 people, uh, and, and that's my process of, of condensing a story because 
when I tell the story to people, and, and God, you know, David spends a lot of time in the van <laughs> with me. <laughs> he hears all the stories first. Um, but, but over the process of telling a story over and over and over again, what happens is it, it condenses itself down to, to its vital elements, right? That, that as you tell it to people, you see what their reactions are and you go, oh, it's funny that they go there and then they go there. And, it, and in that process of telling it 40 or 50 times, like I said, it condenses down uh, into, into something that I can turn into you know, five minutes worth of drama. And um, in the last time out in Genoa, I, there was this amazing story that, that um, I, I found uh, walking the streets. Um, and it's about the liberation of Genoa at the end of the Second World War. And uh, so I've been telling the story to everyone. And if you want to know the story, uh, hang around at the break. <laughs> and I'll tell each and every one of you <laughs> the story. Uh, and I was telling it to my brother, Bob. And when I finished telling him the story, he went, wow, that's an amazing story. I said, yeah. He goes, you should call that The Benefits of Surrender. And I went, that's a great title. Uh, and so I went away and I started trying to write the song. Um, from that title, but of course, as I started writing, I wrote this song that had absolutely nothing to do with the liberation of Genoa, uh, but did have everything to do with the benefits of surrender. And so I decided that the, the liberation of Genoa is actually going to go into another, another. Um, it's going to be a book, because so, it's just too big. Anyway, but, but the benefits of surrender did become a song. And uh, on the, the new CD, and um, as I started writing it, I began began to realize that you know, like we, we live in this culture down here. Certainly, Canada it's getting that way. That everybody's in their own separate foxhole, right? And everybody's digging digging trenches and uh, and uh, fighting all comers, and it's just fight, fight, fight all the time. It's argue, argue, argue all the freaking time. And it's wearing me out. And we've forgotten the fact that sometimes there is a benefit in surrendering, right? Yeah. And I began to think about how much different my life could have been had I surrendered more to music, had I surrendered more to art, had I surrendered more to love, my, my life would have been uh, different. And so would have yours. And so this is the, the benefits of surrender. <laughs> Benefits 
gates of surrender Lately I thought I am not where I should be I could be living the here and now Holding fast when I should be seeding ground, knowing that what goes out may yet come around. And I've been making do when I could have had splendor if I could accept the benefits of surrender. this song with a uh, this song we'll finish this set with a song I wrote with my good friend uh, Catherine McClellan it was a few years back and we decided we wanted to write a tune for our times and so we ended up writing a marching tune <laughs> because we figured there was going to be a lot of marching in our future and it turns out we're right and uh, it's got a part that you can sing on it <laughs> it's got a part that you can sing on it Fantastic. Uh, here's what you sing. You sing, walk on. Want to try that? Two, three, four. Walk on. Fantastic. Whole chorus goes, walk on. Better days are coming. Walk on. You don't have to walk alone. Hold on to the things you believe in. Keep on walking till we all get home. So walk on, walk on, hold on, keep on, right? And even, you know, it's a bit of a marching tune, so if you feel you've got a good hardwood floor here, you want to add some of that marching feel into it, that'll be great. We'll play this song, take a bit of a break, come back for the second half. Agreed. Going to have dessert now or wait till after the show? Before the song? No, no. <laughs> dessert well, in the break yeah, or after yeah. the show? Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> Spoken like a thin man. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three.
the fifth just to right. Uh, <laughs> well, it's their left. Yeah, it's it's their, their, their left. left. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Get on your right. Lots of chocolate cake and other things. And other things. Cake. The cheesecake looks amazing. Too. Cookies, cheesecake. You can get cherries on the cheesecake. It's very good. Oh. Brownies. We'll see you back here. Okay.
And then December 8th, Windborne is doing the midwinter. Uh, it's basically our holiday show, holiday show this year. And then we have wonderful things yep. coming up in the and spring, we'll including really more community oh, dancing yeah. in yeah. this yeah. building so and a great right. concert yeah. series. I will right. tell you, well, no, I won't tell you more about it. You'll get a postcard. Sign up on the mailing list, oldsongs.org, and you can just sign up on the mailing list. And we won't deluge you with mail, but you know we will send you some things occasionally. Without further ado, James and David. Chart there at the foot end of the bed. They think I'm blind, or I can't read it. Well, I've read it every word, and every word it says is death. So, confession is that the reason that you came? Get it off my chest before I check out of the game. Since you mentioned it. Well, there's 13 things I'll name 13 crosses high above the cold Missouri water August 49, West Montana The hottest day on record The forest tinder dry Lightning strikes in the mountains I was crew chief at the jump base, I prepared those boys to fly. Take the drop zone, C-47 comes in low, feel the tap on your leg that tells you go. See the circle of that fire down below, yeah, 15 of us dropped above the cold Missouri water. Gauge the fire, yeah, I'd seen bigger. So I ordered them to side hill, and we'd fight it from below. We'd have our backs to that river. Yeah, we'd have it licked by morning, even if we took it slow. But the fire crown jumped the valley just ahead. There was no way down We headed for the ridge instead Too big to fight it we have to fight that slope instead Flames one step behind Above the cold Missouri water The sky had turned red The smoke was boiling Two hundred yards to Safety, death was 50 yards behind. I don't know why, I just thought it. I struck a match to waste high grass, running out of time. Tried to tell them, step into this fire I've set. We can't make it, this is the only chance you'll get. But they cursed me. Ran for the rocks above instead And I lay face down and prayed Above the cold Missouri water And when I rose Like the phoenix And that world reduced to ashes 
There were none but two survived And I stayed that night But one day after I carried bodies to the river Wondering how I'd stayed alive Thirteen stations Of the cross to mark their fall I Had my say I'll confess to nothing more And I'll join them now Those that left me long before Thirteen crosses high above The cold Missouri water Thirteen crosses high above Cold as a two back to back before. No. But why not? So, uh, you know, we were all um, saddened by the passing of Gordon Lightfoot. And uh, I was lucky enough uh, to be asked to uh, be on the only Gordon sanctioned uh, tribute album um, that's ever been released that, that went over there. Beautiful. And when they, when they called me and asked me to be on the album, they said, what do you want to play? And I just immediately went, uh, Canadian Railroad Trilogy. And then hung up the phone and I went, oh my God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no so pressure. I went over and I picked up my guitar and I, and I picked it up and I basically played it. Like I hadn't played it in 20 years. But I basically picked up my guitar and I played the song. And like that is, this, that is the sign of a great song. That after 20 years you can go reconnect with that song. There might have been a couple of little hitches here and there. But basically, I could play the whole thing. And, and that was the quality of the stuff that Gordon did and the, the, the stuff that Gordon wrote. And uh, both David and I have been uh, lucky enough to participate in a lot of this. A guy named uh, Jory uh, Nash up in uh, Canada who has been putting on Gordon Lightfoot tribute shows for, uh, for years. And uh, we've been lucky enough to participate in some of those. And. Um, the year before last at Mariposa, they were inducting Gordon into into the uh, Canadian. Uh, well, one thing about the about the Gordon Lightfoot shows, which uh, especially the ones that happened in in oh, Hughes, Hughes Room, room in Tri yeah. in in Toronto, were uh, like they'd be three night long affairs, and and they were just fantastic shows. And uh, generally, Gordon would show up, uh, yeah. like uh, generally on the last night, and uh, somebody might huck him a guitar. He started bringing his own guitar. And then he started like, bringing his own, yeah. That's kind of suspicious right there. You yeah. know, it's like the sound thing. But uh, you're sitting there just playing in front of the man himself, and, and it was amazing. But, but uh, uh, the year before last at Mariposa, they were inducting him into the uh, Mariposa Hall of Fame. And uh, the, so they, they staged one of these Gordon tribute shows. And then there was going to be this big tribute on the, on the, the, the stage, in the, the main stage in the evening. And... Uh, uh, so I, I was going to be on the show, and, and I had chosen to do the Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Why not? And, uh, no pressure. No pressure. And, uh, and, but I had my boys with me at the festival, and we had a little medical emergency happen. And uh, by the time I got everything settled, it was like I, I was in a bit of a rush to get down to the park, and uh, I was going for this meeting because I was going to be emceeing the main stage that night. And... Uh, and uh, I, I got on site and I parked the van and, and uh, started heading towards the main stage where this meeting was going to be. And I could hear 
somebody singing a Gordon Lightfoot tune, and I thought, oh, they must be, just be bringing out the sound system on the main stage for tonight, because I thought the Gordon Light, Lightfoot tribute was gonna happen when they gave him the award that night on the main stage. But then I kept hearing this, this thing, and it wasn't coming in from the main stage, and it was like, crap. And I opened my phone and found the email, and I was missing the workshop. Like, and, I, and it's like, oh my God. And then I looked at the, the song the person was singing, where it was in the lineup of the workshop, and it was like the second last song. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> Screwed it. And I thought, should I just head backstage and hide, or should I go and take my lumps at the workshop stage where this is happening? So I thought, I'll go take my lumps. So I went to the, I went to the, uh, towards the stage, and just as I rounded into the, into the back of the stage, there's Jory standing there, and he, and he looks at me, and I guess they were running behind time. So he looks at me, and he goes, well, I'm glad you're here, you're up next. <laughs> I went, yeah, sorry, just had a bit of a problem back at the hotel, and I go, okay, well, you're, you're next. And, and he goes, where's your guitar? <laughs> I went, I'm gonna do it a cappella. <laughs> And he goes, what? I said, I'm gonna do it a cappella. And then just as that happened, this guy finished on stage and, and he was coming, coming off. So Jory comes, uh, goes up on, on stage and I'm standing there. And Jory goes, well, next up is James Keelahan with what I'm sure is gonna be a very interesting version <laughs> of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And I thought, well, that's kind of cheeky. <laughs> but I, so I got up and David was in the pit band like, in the, the, and there's a pedal steel player and another thing. I, I just said to him, look, can you just, like, <laughs> like uh, in, uh, in, can you just pedal in B flat? B flat you know, B just, B flat, yeah. just, I just want you to do this, right? And, and I said, let the other guys know. And so the, David lays down this chord like this. And then I just start singing. The legend lives on from the Chippewa down. Of the big lake they call Ichikumi. Right, and it's all very weird and atmospheric, and the pedal steel ends up coming in. And it's just, it was beautiful, <laughs> if I, the, the whole thing. And then, uh, so I finished, and I finished, and then there was just like about 10 seconds of silence. And then the crowd erupted, right, just erupted. And I turned, and Jory was standing there, and I went, Huh? <laughs> 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 and, uh, and he, uh, uh, and so, and then he moves aside, and I look, and Gordon is sitting, like, right there. Like, he's just sitting, like, right there. And so it was like, oh, okay, so I come off stage, and, I, and, and he gets up, and he leans forward to shake my hand, and I lean into him, and we clasp hands like this. And he leaned into me, and, and, and he said, I always love it when you sing my songs. And it was like... Unbelievable. And then he pulled me a little bit closer like this and he goes, screwed up some of the words though. <laughs> oh Which was just like the most Gordon thing ever. Anyway, I'll try not to screw up the words. Can't make any guarantees. <laughs> Flowing with visions 
sons of their day. And many a fortune lost and won, many a debt to pay. Yeah. 
not run When the wild majestic mountains stood alone against the sun Long before the white man and long before the wheel When the green dark forest was too silent to be real When the green dark forest was too silent to be real And many other dead men too silent to be real And many other dead men too silent forget that thing is because it's it's a very ungordon thing and that he he repeats the the same uh, thing twice right yeah but only kind of partly probably or does he yeah. complete it a different way no no, no it, he, it, actually he, he it? actually just it's like he got yeah. to that part in the song and just wrote this thing and then went ah you screw it i'll just write that again <laughs> <laughs> but you're always expecting that there's another part to it but there isn't it's this it's the same thing repeated twice ah double think it's that, um, whatever, I can't remember now. There was one now. <laughs> Where was he? <laughs> Hard time. 
I walked out of a morning fair There's rocky mountains shining Shadows drift o'er frost-covered hills Colors all gold and tan Crystal Ever on me, it's the first time ever I've been claimed. Alberta is your name. Credit 
with no money down. That's the way we built this town. On a banker's ledger, we watched it rise. A house of cards and a pack of lies. A house of cards and a pack of lies. Ladder breaks. We all get wealthy, but would we ever get wise? The house of cards and the pack of lies. Come on. The house of cards and the pack of lies. We sold your plastic and took your race with suits and ties. Joker's face. And now there's nowhere left to hide but a house of cards and a pack of lies. A house of cards and a pack of So there's some amazing things that, that kind of happened in my life, uh, partly because of being a, well, it's almost all because of being a musician, because of the places we go and the people that we meet and, and the, the things that we see. And, uh, We used to go down and play uh, quite regularly in a little place called Pistol River in, in Oregon, uh, down on the southern Oregon coast. And, uh, and uh, when you play Pistol River, you have to pay, play two nights because everybody in Pistol River wants to come and the hall only holds 200 people. <laughs> and uh, pretty isolated community. And, um, uh, at the, the time that I was going down playing, the, the concerts were put on by a guy named Glenn Elfman, who became a really good friend of mine. And uh, 
really good friend of mine. And uh, Glenn died of leukemia almost 10 years ago now. When he died, he willed me this guitar. Nineteen oh five Martin guitar. And uh which he had, had lovingly restored. And uh Dylan, there you are. Dylan Jim, too. <laughs> It will be. And so, round about last Christmas, a little bit earlier than Christmas, I was cooking in the kitchen, and the boys were horsing around in the front room, and I heard a crash. And I came out, and my son Thomas had inadvertently knocked this guitar over, and the headstock broke off. Right here, just completely broke off. And uh, and he was understandably distraught. And uh, I calmed him down. I said, it can be fixed. You know, it's a thing. It can be fixed. And in fact, In fact, I said to him, that guitar has seen worse than, than what you just did to it. I said, because this guitar was sunk at Pearl Harbor. This guitar belonged to my friend Glenn Elfman's uncle Eugene, Eugene Peck. And uh, you know it's Eugene's guitar because if you look up here on, on one of these heads, he's scratched in his initials, GP, Gene Peck. Gene Peck's Mother bought it in 1905 and gave it to Jean in 1935 when Jean joined the Navy. And Jean uh, traveled all over the world with the U.S. Navy playing this guitar. And on the morning of Pearl Harbor, his ship, the Nevada, uh, which was the, uh, would, it did a lot of functions, but it was the mail ship for the fleet. And Jean completed a run uh, over to the Arizona with the, with the mail uh, when the attack came in and Gene was killed on board the Arizona. The Nevada was the only ship that sortie. It, it was under steam, so it started to move as soon as the attack came in, which meant that the entire weight of the Japanese Air Force then descended on the Nevada to try and sink it at the mouth of the harbor. And after taking two torpedoes and God knows how many bombs, uh, the captain grounded the Nevada in the shallows so that he wouldn't block the harbor. And uh, days and days later, Gene's buddies went into the wreck of the Nevada and they went down into the crew quarters and they found this guitar and they brought it up and they sent it to his mom where it lay under a bed in New, in New York until sometime in the mid 60s when Glenn found it and asked if he could take it and have it restored which he did and then one night when I was playing in Pistol River it was, at, it was after I'd written a song about the Japanese internment called Curious Piano Glenn came down because on, on the first night and, uh, and said, that song about the Japanese internment, he brought this guitar, he says, tomorrow night could you play that on my uncle's guitar? Uh, and um, and so what I told my son, or what I should have told my son, was that um, what this guitar now means to me is resilience, right? Because after everything that this guitar has been through, after everything that this guitar has been through, it still plays the sweetest music. And that's a lesson for all of us, is that no matter how broken we've been, and no matter how uh, the tides of uh, whatever in history have swept us along, <clears throat> that ultimately we can be resilient and ultimately we can still make the same kind of music. So this is a song about a piano on the west coast of Canada during the, the internment of the Japanese in Canada and uh, played on a guitar that goes into the water on, in the middle of the Pacific. Let's make sure I, 
always got to make sure it's in tune. Feel free after the show if you want to come up and have a little look at the guitar. You can certainly do that. It's a little finicky though, because it's old. <laughs> we know about finicky. <laughs> We are year old. This is uh, <laughs> this is almost 120 years old. This guitar. Yeah, that's right. Of all of Kirito's joys, the thing she loved the best was to play her prize piano. When the sun had gone to rest I used to hear the moats drift down Along the silent water As Kiri played the notes and scales For her dear sons and daughters And me I play piano Not as good as Kiri She went in for that long haired stuff But my she played it pretty The old piano had a tone That set my heart to waking It always sounded sweet as though When it was Kiri playing That December when the sudden fleet Turned to smoke and ashes The order came to confiscate Their fishing boats and caches The curious husband forced to go And work in labor camps The curie left alone to fend And hold the fort as best she can But the music did not drift as often from up the cove at Kiri's house And when it did it sounded haunting Played with worry, played with doubt For Kiri knew that soon she too Would be compelled to leave And the old upright would stay behind And Kiri she would grieve So many years have come and 
gone Since Kiri's relocation I look back now upon that time with shame and resignation For Kiri knew what I did not That if we must be free Sometimes we must sacrifice to gain our dignity Yes, Kiri knew what I did not, that if we must be free, then sometimes we must sacrifice to gain our dignity. this guitar is that like really it stayed at home uh, but it was after that accident that I figured it was time to start taking it out again but I'm never gonna fly with it so the only people who get to see this guitar and get that story on stage are people who live within driving distance <laughs> Anyway, we would like to thank you all so very much for coming this evening and making us feel warm and welcome here at Old Songs, as you always do. One of my favorite places to play, one of my favorite festivals in the world. <laughs> I just really want to thank Joy and Chris for, for everything that you do, all the volunteers selling the CDs, selling the cake. <laughs> Just, it's a, it's a real treat to be here. Just a real treat to be here. And uh, I was talking with, uh, with uh, somebody at the break about uh, the importance of, of mentoring and uh, about the fact that when I mentioned I was going to start writing that book, I've actually engaged a, a mentor to teach me. Because I, I don't know, like I, I write these things and they're five minutes long. All my characters live for five minutes, <laughs> right? And then they're gone. And it's like, if I want to write something book length, it seems to me that takes a whole different skill set that I don't have. And so I've actually secured, for this next three months when I'm going to be trying to write that book, I've actually secured a mentor uh, and, a, and a coach to, to help me through that process. And we were talking about, uh, about that and, and uh, about the fact that, you know, when I was um, learning to be a musician, when I was a young person, that's the way it happened. You got... Mentors, you, you know, you, we didn't call them mentors at the time. We called them the old guys <laughs> And the old guys were the ones that whipped you into shape, right? They were the ones who taught you how to tour, taught you how to arrange a song, how to sing a song, how to write a song, you know, and uh, And they were always full of helpful advice But the best piece of advice that I ever got from any of them was uh, Was when he said Jim always play with people who are better than you. And that is, in fact, the best piece of advice. And I'd like you to put your hands together, please, for Mr. David Woodhead. <laughs> Try to be modest there. That's modest. <laughs> oh, <wait a> <laughs> yeah. No more of your famous false modesty. <laughs> it's a Doonesbury line. Yeah. We'll leave you with this one. It is always, it is just that. It is a pleasure playing with David. And it's a pleasure traveling with David too because David takes information and history seriously. And, uh, and he's got several uh, things that, that uh, are historical passions of his, and, and I love that about him. Uh, but lately in the, in the car, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know when this started. Cell service. Cell service. He, he, fi he finally got a data plan. He finally got a, he finally got a data plan. And it's, so, so it's now so, like we're driving. And it was like, the whole, the whole way down, I now know the whole history of everything between 
between Watertown and Utica. <laughs> okay. we, we now know who the hell Herkimer was. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right? Got his ass licked by Joseph Brandt, yeah, a great Oris Canadian. Ernest Kenny, how do you ass say that? Ass kicked, not licked, sorry. Battles, yep. Yeah. So like the whole, now, now that he's got a, a data plan, it's, it's like, <laughs> God almighty. Shut up. We but also no. know the origin of Voorheesburg. Voorheesville. Voorheesville. Voorheesburg. No wonder I didn't find it. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah, pronounce it with a Canadian accent. That's right. <laughs> Voorheesville. Uh, it's a very new town here, actually. By, uh, what about those railway ago. tracks, David? Those railway? Well, we've been hearing them. I haven't seen them yet. Yeah, we drove that's... over them. Yeah. Well, the, yeah well, they, what was there about, uh, about what there's, there's something weird about the, the tracks Well, here. there was, oh yeah, this was a junction, right? There was like six lines going through it or something like that. And then, well, back in the day. And now it's just, we have what used to be the New York Central. Is that right? The CSX line here? You notice that they're not going, oh, we don't know. You, no, they, apparently they know. <laughs> yeah. Get that data plan, will you? Yeah, yeah. It is very entertaining. Yeah. I can't... The whole Black I, River I don't know what the hell is going to happen between here and Brunswick, Maine tomorrow. Ooh, lots. Lots. Sorry? Well, it's like four and a half hours. Yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that, well, hang on. We'll find what? out. Up. They say up. More. They, more. they say more. No, our, our, our GPS is telling us... <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah, it'll be you it's just the other side the of Portland, of Boston. Right? You don't go into yeah. Boston. You know. Out there. Hang on, some of the, somebody's looking it up. <laughs> yeah. My regret is that we don't get a little farther into Maine so we can see the Wiscasset Railway, the WWNF. Yeah, that's really something. Those guys have a volunteer program that just can't be beat. They're building a steam locomotive there, like from scratch. A replica of one of the narrow gauge ones that ran north out of West Gasset. It's uh, unbelievable the uh, amount of resources and the manpower they've got. They've got a whole machine shop, and oh, it's amazing. Yeah, wow. They're, they're laying track. You know, you get a, a volunteer day in West Gasset, and it's like 64 people show up to lay track. Wow. Welcome to my van. Yeah, this is. <laughs> well, you seem to be a little busy over there, so I. Just give, there. Just yeah, give me yeah. some room. Well, oh, I've been there three times already. <laughs> I'm always ready to go again to see their locomotive, how it's coming. Oh, I got the personal tour. I know that. Well, I don't know personally, but, you know, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a volunteer, they were. <laughs> well, shall we continue? Um... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, we shall. I'm going to end with this one. It's a song inspired by Canada's largest mining disaster, but it does have a jaunty tune. <laughs> it's got a part you can sing on it. I sing, Say it don't go, and you sing, Say it don't go. <laughs> shall we try that once? <laughs> Say it don't go. Say. Five and a half hours. Oh, five. Nah, nah. We'll do it. Do I hear six and a half? In labor, 
wedding call from the boom of the pit It's full of life they savor And in that mind, young man, you'll find the wealth of broken dreams As long and as dark and as black and as wide as the cold and the hill breast sea Say you don't go It's one short step You might leave this world behind So you don't go, so you don't go down Bosses will say you don't go.
somewhere ahead when our wheels have stopped rolling. When the tires bite the gravel, traveling through. And somewhere ahead, there'll be clean sheets and linen. Somewhere ahead, there is rest. thousands of miles now are working our friends to the faces we're new and somewhere behind in this circular world love somewhere behind there was rest and Headlights roll by, the cars push on through, somewhere uncharted, close to the border, somewhere in fact, there is rest and there's you. Somewhere ahead, when our wheels have stopped rolling, when the tires bite the gravel, traveling's through. And somewhere ahead, there'll be clean sheets and linen. Somewhere ahead, there is rest and there's you. Somewhere ahead, there is rest and Thank you all very much. That's David Woodhead. Have a safe drive home. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Drive safely. Uh, I know it's been raining occasionally. Also, many hands make light work, so if you wouldn't mind, those on this side of the room, if you can fold your chair, put them against the wall, and on the other side, please do the same. And thank you to all the volunteers. We couldn't do this without. Yeah.